The 2020 census is coming up, and to prepare, Congress recently asked a group of experts, what's the worst that could happen if we get it wrong? Their answer? Only the restraint or ruin of American business for an entire decade. That can't be true, can it? Plus, we feature the thoughts of special guest Matthew Jesser from Beyond the Data. Stay tuned to see all this and more. Welcome to Marketing is Broken, the weekly series where we think everyone's head should be counted when it comes to making better business decisions. Bueller. 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 The United States Joint Economic Committee recently held a hearing entitled The Economic Impacts of the 2020 Census and Business Uses of Federal Data. The bipartisan committee consisting of 10 Democrats and 10 Republicans from both chambers of Congress met on May 22nd and asked a panel of experts for their input on a series of important issues, including the importance of census accuracy, the trade-offs that come from changing census methodology, and how new techniques like machine learning can help better leverage census data. Everyone seemed to agree that census data was important, and perhaps Nicholas Everstadt from the American Enterprise Institute said it best when he said, whether you're a progressive or conservative, in favor of more government or less, you need good data to inform your efforts to make our country better. While good data was the desired outcome for everyone, there was an agreement on what that actually means. To some, it included getting the most accurate headcount possible. To others, it meant including new questions and introducing new techniques to create new and meaningful ways to use the data to better serve we, the people. We wanted to know how businesses could be impacted by some of the proposed changes to the census. And so we reached out to Matthew Jesser, co-founder and data coach at Beyond the Data, to ask him some questions to help us build a consensus on how to approach the consensus. So first of all, what does it mean to have good data in the census or any other survey? And is there such a thing as an objective approach when creating these things? Yeah, so oftentimes people really put data on this pedestal, like it's this panacea wonderland of fact. Uh, and the truth is there's no such thing as good data uh, in and of itself. Uh, data is just a representation of something that's happening or has happened in the real world. So um, the way that I think about good data or bad data is really dependent on the question that you're trying to answer rather than the data that you're trying to collect. For instance, for instance, if I was trying to use census data to answer the question, what's the best kind of cheese to put on a grilled cheese sandwich, uh, the census data would be bad data, right? It's not useful to me to answer that question. For the record, it's Asiago and cheddar. <laughs> but if I was trying to answer the question, what kinds of uh, ethnic foods should I put on my local grocery shelf, uh, and I needed to know the, uh, the demographics of my local population, the census data would be really useful to answer that type of question. Sure. On, on that note, so some people want to add more questions to the census around citizenship, criminal history, and even social capital as a way to better understand the nation's health and happiness. Um, what would be some pros and cons to the strategy? Yeah. Collecting data uh, before you've collected it seems really easy, right? Uh, we have these big data technologies. We can store massive quantities of data. We have data scientists who can mine all of this information. Um, the unfortunate reality is that more data doesn't necessarily mean uh, better. Uh, there are uh, uh, numerous uh, ethical as well as logistical challenges that come anytime we, uh, we add a question to a survey or a census. Uh, just a couple off the top of my head. So could the question elicit some sort of bias, especially amongst certain demographic groups? Uh, if so, you're going to get skewed results uh, and that data is going to be less useful uh, to answering the questions that we want to answer. Uh, second, uh, people don't often think about this, but anytime you add length to, uh, to a census or to a survey, uh, you're going to have an adverse uh, reaction to the response rates. People don't want to answer questions for 20 minutes. Um, so you're either going to get less responses or those responses are going to deteriorate over time. Uh, how many times have you been 
filling out an online survey and you get through page six and you just start filling out fives across the board because you just don't care anymore. Sure. Um, same is true in like a, a census or a survey world. Uh, the third one, and, and this is a really big one, is thinking about what happens if that data is made public at a personal level. So we hear about data breaches all the time. Uh, retailers, online uh, uh, organizations, uh, credit card companies, they're all struggling with, uh, with data breaches and the federal government and the local governments are no exception to that rule. So uh, while we don't plan on having a data breach, what happens if uh, certain questions that might have some really strong biases uh, are made public at an individual level? And could that uh, negatively impact certain citizens uh, who answered truthfully uh, on the census? That's a great point. For example, there's one question they wanna add uh, around your faith in local institutions. And so mm -hmm. that could be, uh, that could have some profound implica implications. Yep. All right, so last question. One expert suggested a new frontier where machine learning and high-tech computing could be used to analyze census data along private or corporate data. So how valuable or not valuable would it be to match a citizen's census profile with things like their Amazon purchases, Facebook history, something else? Yeah, so what I'm gonna say is the frontier is kind of here and it's, it's alive and well. Uh, developers often talk about um, open source tools and technologies. And in the data space, we actually talk a lot about uh, open data. Uh, there is a website that the federal government uh, provides called data.gov, uh, and it provides a ton of information about what's going on within government. Um, you can get things like college tuition trends as well as hourly precipitation by zip code if you really wanted to. The catch here is that anything that's, uh, that is open sourced from the government right now is all anonymized data. Um, I don't really see the government changing that fact. Um, you know, if, if Mr. Zuckerberg uh, isn't allowed to, uh, to provide individual uh, um, data on individual people, I don't think the federal government is going to be doing that anytime soon. So while there's certainly a lot of value uh, in the Amazons and the Googles uh, and the Facebooks of the world having access to this information at an individual level, uh, I don't see that happening anytime soon, just for the pure privacy aspects uh, of what we're talking about. There is one exception to this, and it's a really cool exception. Uh, the census actually allows uh, individual records to be uh, made public 72 years after the census uh, was done. So the, the latest data that we have is from 1940. It was made, it, or it was made available in 2012. Uh, and you can go out to the website and you can actually search for individual people uh, who are alive in 1940. You can look for your house or your apartment uh, and see who lived there, how much money they made, uh, what their, what their um, uh, demographics are, where they worked, how many kids they have. Uh, it's a really cool way to explore our history uh, at a very individual and unique level. That is very exciting. Matt Jesser, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. How can we ensure the most accurate census possible? What trade-offs do you see in your marketing between adding more questions to a form and the participation or conversion rates of that form? And lastly, does anyone else think that the government adding social capital questions to the census sounds like an episode of Black Mirror? Share your thoughts in the comments below and you might just win yourself some new Brandish Insights gear. We'll see you next time. Hey, it's Josh from Brandish Insights. Thank you for watching Marketing is Broken. If you like this week's episode, please click below to subscribe or check out other episodes. And if your company could use more insights around your branding efforts, check out brandishinsights.com.